Talk about genetics a little bit. How much of a factor does that play? I mean, we have, people think my dad had a high blood pressure, I have it. That's just the way it is. To, uh, you know, in extreme cases like Angelina Jolie, who, you know, was changing body parts because, as a preventative measure. So how important is genetics when it comes to that wide range of, of areas? Well, genes is incredibly important in terms of who you should mate with and produce offspring. In other words, you want to mate with somebody from the same species, otherwise you're not going to be able to perpetuate your species. Right. Other than that, less than 2% of the issues we're going to deal with are going to be caused by genes. And those are very rare, you know, Down syndrome, cystic fibrosis, they exist. But in terms of chronic illness, no chance. I mean, just, all you have to do is just go, just a minute. First of all, in the history of species on Earth, what species has ever become sick or, or endangered or gone extinct because of genes? Not, not, not a species on it ever. In the history of biology, it's never happened. There's not a species on Earth where we would say genes are getting worse with time instead of better. That's, what, that's the whole concept of adaptation and evolution. We get better with time. If we look at the exponential increase in chronic illness rates just over the last 50 years, look at obesity rates over the last 20 years. How could it be a gene? We haven't had a massive genetic mutation over the last, right? So our genome stayed the same. Chronic illness rates and our lifestyle choices have changed exponentially. So how can you blame this for this? You can't. You don't have to be a mathematical genius to figure out. It just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. So when we fill out those forms, do you have heart disease? Do you have cancer on your mom's side or your dad's side? A lot of that may have to do with, well, however my parents were brought up, they brought me up that way. I'm living that way, bringing my kids up that way. It's The lifestyle continues as well, correct? Watch. As goes the habitat, so go the inhabitants. So we know for a fact that it's lifestyle. Of, of, we, there's been all kinds of studies been done on uh, genetically identical twins. So, you know, if you want to decide if it's, is it environment or habitat or, or genes, well, you have to control one of those variables. What better way to do that than study genetically identical twins? Mm -hmm. So when they study those genetically identical twins, we know for sure that if we take two genetically identical twins, separate them at birth, there's no predictive value in what illness they were getting, including cancer. Yet when we look at kids who are adopted, we see that if their parents are sick, the adopted kids are 500% are in, increased chance of getting the same illness. Why? Because they're, they're being taught how to eat, move, and think. Look at our ants. You know, think of people now who will tell you, well, you know, um, people of Hispanic descent or Native Americans have this genetic predisposition for diabetes or African Americans. Well, just 200 years ago, how many people in Africa were obese? 200 years ago, how many Native Americans were obese? 200 years ago, how many people from Mexico were obese? Zero. But now we're, they're told that their genes haven't changed a bit, but now they're told they have a genetic predisposition to it. It's ridiculous.